Well, I'm going to go to the joke. So, what I'm going to say is, you already can see Don's Rio, you just go on with Nudgy and Dudgeon's going to start. We're not talking about Rooney. They didn't know what I'll do, good on Gagari or Gassum. Yet he sought to ask the Tonka Garako, Don or yet in the start, even Zogi, Don or Guego Scott, Nick and Umbui. They didn't know what I'll do, a Guades and Eagle, and yet they're the Gerdo, Don or Guego or Quasari on Uposuk. They didn't know what I'll do. A guide zini ganyat dera gerdo. Deti ne vada do yeti sata gonha mer on other hats and I gonna go rio da di hawa koi. A yonki ata ganha dam da oi aron hats ran na kaza tasa ran na gunungwe. Dam da oi aron hats ran ne a goi go ana gordo ne gai ana dasa da go ne skana dano aron hats ran ne skana. Kazat stasira, dano kari wakari shunsira, dano damda oy asa niga darige ne ganyaga haga kadinato, dano taharuni, dano riskare wage. Damda oy aron hetsira ne gayanda wana, dano gani kuriyo, yeah, okay, so just to identify. Uh, last week, I had made a post and told everybody that there was something that happened in a court case that I've been involved in now, or that uh, charges have been on me since last December. Uh, charges of tobacco. Um, uh, they had stopped the, me in Labelle, which is halfway between Ganawagi and... Uh, uh, Gitskan Zibi, uh, Manawaki. Oh, okay, anyways, last week I identified that we had just received minutes now from a court case that uh, that's in in my uh, in my file. Another person uh, had gone into court and uh, went in to uh, address their issue. But anyways, after uh, they were in there, the court uh, heard. Um, uh, my case, but no one was present for my case. And uh, the person uh, that went in, uh, they asked for the minutes pertaining to their case. But the court also gave them minutes from my case. And there was something that came up very damning in this uh, in this case. Uh, this was approximately a month, month and a half ago. Um, and, but we only just got the minutes last week. So uh, just to set the stage here for everybody is um, I was stopped, like I said, last December. Uh, they tried to uh, serve me with a, a warrant or what papers to go into to court in October or August, in August sometime. Uh, anyways, there was a arrest warrant that was put out for me. And then uh, late August, early October, I forget exactly when, uh, there was a bailiff that was escorted right to my house by one of the sellout peacekeepers, uh, a dock stater. Uh, I forget his name, but it uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to share a video of him. Uh, but uh, they had they had brought this bailiff to my house to serve me papers for a uh, charges in tobacco that was uh, coming directly from uh, Revenue Quebec. So the sellout peacekeepers escorted a bailiff into town to serve me a arrest warrant to serve me papers from Revenue Quebec in relation to tobacco charges. Now, if anybody knows, or if anybody doesn't know. Here in Ganawagi, the sellout peacekeepers uh, are go on the agenda, or they tell everybody this that they're they're neutral, and as far as tobacco goes, that they're never that they're not going to uphold any white man's laws on anybody here in Ganawagi pertaining to tobacco. This is a lie, of course, because the peacekeepers work with the cops outside to uh, uh, to facilitate uh, the end of our people. Uh, meaning that any person who is free uh, uh, attempting to uh, pursue uh, anything uh, that is historically 
our uh, our rights to do. The peacekeepers, the elective system are working to destroy that, to undermine that, to bring everybody into the taxation regime as uh, the municipality of Ganawagi under the province of Quebec. This is what's happening right now. This is what uh, for the peacekeepers to serve, to escort uh, bailiff from Revenue Quebec onto the res here and to come to my house and especially for tobacco exemplifies that the peacekeepers, the, the ban system are working uh, with the Canadian, so-called Canadian government to destroy everything that is our rights that are guaranteed to us through treaties, guaranteed to us that everybody knows has been our historic rights. But uh, this is what the peacekeepers and the ban system are right now working to destroy because they're working in bringing in the taxation as of this year, it is in full swing. April 1st, uh, the tax regime is in place. Uh, taxes on homes, taxes on property, taxes on income, taxes on everything here. Right now, uh, all the sellout peacekeepers, the sellout uh, people in the ban system, they all working on the reserve here. They all pay taxes to Quebec and to Canada. Now imagine, this is on the reserve. And here, where you would think that more so than anyone anywhere else that our rights apply. Well, here, the sellout system, the peacekeepers and the uh, ban system, are all paying their income taxes, all paying taxes to the province and to the, the federal government. So how then can anybody in Ganawagi expect to um, uh, stand for their rights when the system that most people in Ganawagi are supporting is actually undermining your rights? Well, of course, this goes against the people, but the people are too stupid to, to realize this, to know this, because they all got their heads up the rear end of the system. Everybody in Ganawagi is participating in the system. Either they work in the system or they have family who works in the system, so they don't want to rock the boat. They want to make sure that their family keeps getting those good paychecks because anybody who works in the system is getting paid a minimum of 900 bucks a week for being right here at home, not having to deal with anything in the real world. And here, all the corruption they can get away with. They don't have to, like if they worked on the outside and were corrupt as they are here, they would lose their jobs, they would be fired, they would even end up in court and end up in jail time. Because here in Gunawagi, as everybody knows, the system itself is a corrupt system that uh, perpetuates uh, corruption. Uh, the uh, housing department has a scandal, an unresolved scandal uh, of the last couple of years of over a million dollars stolen from the people of Ganawagi. And so this is what the people who work in the system, what they're used to. They're used to the corruption, being able to steal off of the people and not have any retribution for it. So you can see the reason why the, these people who work in the system and on the cops, why they got no problem paying their taxes because they are corrupt from head to toe and uh, they could pay their taxes it doesn't matter because they just keep stealing out of the system so anyways to get direct into um my court case uh, as i said last week i was going to present court documents so we're going to go right to these court documents i'm going to go over it with you if uh if I could see it from here. <laughs> I'm a long ways from the television. Okay, so the court document is being shared right now. Okay, so, uh, wow, I can barely see that. Can you make it larger? Mm -hmm. Wow, I can still barely see that. Make it larger. Larger, larger, larger. Okay, move it over to the side. Okay, so this is what went on in my court case <laughs> when I wasn't present and nobody was there, but yet they sent me these court minutes. Or they didn't send it to me. They actually sent it to another person who's on a different file, but who, who is in the same, uh, uh, the same charges, but they should not have sent my court minutes to anybody else. This is a violation of my own privacy. Okay, anyways, I'll, I'll read it over with you. So, Madam Justice, so we have a bailiff of the court, James Boudreau Caldwell, and you're going to see him 
in another video that we're going to play in a few minutes, who presented himself in Ganawagi. Go ahead. First in the morning of the 20th of October, 2021, at 8.33, this attempt was unsuccessful. Mr. Boro Carwell came back in the afternoon at 5.43. And it was accompanied by a peacekeeper and attempted to serve a said summons to Mr. Stuart Mayo. Uh, who was not present at the time of the event, came back a third time. So that would be for a second attempt in the afternoon. And a third party went outside of the house, strictly forbidden, forbade the bailiff to approach. Uh, the ground and the house under threat. So this is the bailiff telling the court that I threatened him. Of course, that bailiff is a liar uh, because when he was here, it's all on video. Uh, and this individual informed the bailiff not to come back because the Mr. Mayo himself would never accept these documents in any way. And peacekeepers fully know Mr. Mayo is, and he's acknowledged as, a free man on the land. Now, free man on the land, this is very telling. There is a, uh, what are you doing? I took it off. No, I didn't say share. Okay. Now they identify me as a free man upon the land. Now, he's, this is the peacekeepers telling him this. Now, if anybody knows what this is, free man upon the land, this is a movement within the non-native society of people who don't pay their taxes, people who don't uh, use driver's license, don't register their vehicles, don't use car insurance, that kind of stuff, and who are basically fighting against their own system. Now, that applies to their own people, but these people are also identified as violent violent people. Okay, anyways, uh, he goes on to say, I did myself make an attempt. I communicated with Mr. A court worker from Ganawage. Mr. And you can tell in the way that this bailiff is saying it, he didn't really want to say who this court worker is, but he was stupid because he's a liar. And so a liar, when he's put on the spot in court, uh, being a stupid person will reveal other information. And so this is what we have to be very thankful for, to the stupid lying bailiff <laughs> because he gave everybody in Ganawagi some very important information. So uh, a court worker from Ganawagi, Mr. Well, his name is, just so the court knows, we have a court worker working in Ganawagi who happened to be an ex-peacekeeper for the last 26 years, Mr. Padden. Of course, here they say P-A-D-D-E-N, but we know who he's talking about. Where is he's talking about Mr. Patton, P-A-T-T-O-N. And his name is Bobby Patton. He is the only Patton who's been working in the peacekeepers for the last 26 years. But for the bailiff to say that he's a court worker for the last 26 years is very important because this Bobby Patton hasn't been a cop. Supposedly, he's, he, uh, he hasn't been a cop in town here for about, uh, I think, about 10 years, something like this. So... Regardless of how long the court says that he has been a court worker, the court worker, uh, the, the, the bailiff, is referring to him now in my case, that the court worker spoke to Bobby Patton about my case. Who the hell is Bobby Patton? Is Bobby Patton a cop? Well, officially, on the books, they'll tell you no. But what the bailiff here is 
revealing to everybody in Gunawagi that Bobby Patton has been an undercover working for the government for the past 26 years. A sellout trader. Of course, Bobby Patton, come on. We know, look at who the mother is. Who is his mother? It's not from Gunawagi. His mother is not a native woman. And so this is no problem for Bobby Patton to follow in the footsteps of what his identity is. But for Bobby Patton to be inflicting this upon the people of Gunawagi, well, this is something different. This is something very different. So what Bobby Patton does in telling the court work the lies that he told them, unless the court worker is a lawyer, and now this would be for Bobby Patton to come forward and to straighten this out or not, which really doesn't matter to me because I know Bobby Patton and I don't give a good goddamn about what that guy has to say. He is a sellout trader to our people. And now I know 100% certain that he has been selling out our people, giving names because the cop that stopped us, Constable Constantine, told us that he works with somebody in Gitgan Zibi and somebody in Ganawagi. Now we know the guy that he works with in Ganawagi, it's Bobby Patton. But he also told us, now this is the SQ telling us that he knows that every once in a while that they have to turn over runners. Okay, let's think about this. In Ganawagi, is there an organization? Is it organized? All the people who uh, sell tobacco or who uh, manufacture, is there an organization of them that they all go through one place? No, there isn't. So for the cop to say he knows that they have to turn over runners every once in a while, think of it, who is it that's gonna turn over the runner? Is it gonna be the person who's, who's uh, dispatching the runner? They wouldn't turn over their own runner because then they'd be turning over their own money. They'd be turning themselves in. No. So when the cop says they know, he knows that they have to turn over a runner every once in a while, then ask yourself, who could it be that's turning over our people? It won't be the manufacturer that's manufacturing the tobacco and uh, sending it in a vehicle or whichever way to uh, another reserve, it's not going to be that manufacturer that's going to turn over his own person, his own, uh, the person working for him or the person who's, who's uh, moving that for him. So who is it that's been turning in our people? There's only one organization of corruption here in Gunawagi that's in that position of being able to turn in our people, to sell out our people. And that is the peacekeepers. That is what we knew was happening that day. Even before we were stopped, we had seen the peacekeepers uh, following us uh, by the uh, gas station. They were parked uh, waiting for us to pull out. They were parked waiting in front of a uh, rapid store. And then when we were here, they were, they were passing by really slow. And so we knew that it was the peacekeepers that turned us in. Now we're getting closer to finding out precisely who called Constable Constantine to tell him to turn in somebody to rat on them. I say, clearly here in this document, it shows the name Bobby Patton. It shows him. But was it him? Was he in those peacekeepers' cars that morning? Or was he in an unmarked car? Or was it maybe somebody else in the peacekeepers that he knows? Was it one of his own family? We all know the people who work in the peacekeepers. When you look at them, none of them are native. None of them even have the right to be here in Gunawagi, much less to be walking around Gunawagi with a gun and a badge, working for the white man, turning over our people, ratting on our people. So Bobby Patton is the name who is the rat in Gunawagi. He is the rat, maybe not specifically, I can't pinpoint that he is the rat in my case, but he has been the rat in many cases as identified by this bailiff's own statement in court that Mr. Patton has been working with the court for the past 26 years. Let's see, right now it's uh, 2021, 26 years ago would be what, 1995? Oh. 1995, Bobby Patton was in the cops. And I'll tell you, just even as recent as 10 years ago, 
when uh, we were hanging out at our friends, um, uh, Lee Thompson's, Bobby Patton used to be there quite a bit. And he was an undercover cop ratting on people. And so this is what undercovers do, right? Especially to sell out traders within us. They go from place to place and try to make pretend that they are your friend. Try to make pretend that they are not a cop, but actually all the while, just like Bobby Patton working for the white man to undermine, to rat out our people in what our rights are. And so the system, the, the, the sell out cops here in Ganawagi are the ones compromising our rights. It's not the white man outside. No, it's these people. It's the white men inside in the peacekeepers. No, I'll say this, that the lesbian mayor is 100% aware of this and sanctions this upon the people. But they have this position of being at arm's length because they say that, well, they're not going to, uh, that tobacco is legal here in Gunawagi. They will not enforce the white man's laws or against anybody in Gunawagi. But as you know, when they have warrants out for any of our people for tobacco, just like other people in the past, there was, there's a guy in Gunawagi by the name, last name of Ranch, everybody knows. They had a big uh, 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 fine out for him, Revenue Canada. Revenue Quebec was after him for, I forget how many millions. And he couldn't get him because... and charged him what I think it was something like manslaughter or attempted murder, something like this. It was a ridiculous charge. And so this way, the peacekeepers could then enforce the warrant against him and turn over our people. The peacekeepers, the cops, they're not peacekeepers, they're cops. They work for the white man and they are sellout traders to our people. Bobby Patton has been the undercover cop. And I say the undercover pig for the past 26 years. So 26 years, he hasn't been a cop for who knows how long, I'll say 10 years approximately. So let's see, that would put us around uh, 2010. Okay, how many people in Ganawagi have been arrested and stopped and had their, their loads seized and wondered what had happened? Oh, who, how, how, how did anybody know? You know how? Bobby Patton ratted on you. Use the other cops their network of corruption, the cops network of corruption here in Ganawagi, because it's the cops that are the criminals here. They are the ones trying to stop our people on behalf of the white man from being within our identity, from exercising our rights. And all the laws that they inflict upon our people are the white man's laws. And the white man's laws are to stop our people from being us. These are the genociders. What genocide looks like today, is a sell-out cop in Gunawagi that isn't even a native, that isn't even, doesn't even belong here in Gunawagi. Not just Bobby Patton, but others. Others. Many cops here in Gunawagi, as you know, are uh, white mothers. Uh, they're mothers from Shattagi. They do not belong in Gunawagi, much less with a gun and a badge on their hip, just like uh, Eddie Stacy. Pure 100% white man, but yet can rise to the highest levels of the of the cell of cops here in Gunawagi because the band system can control them. You use them because kiss asses like Eddie Stacy knows that they don't belong here in Gunawagi. Know that if the people came to their senses, they would get them the hell out of here and in ways that they deserve. And so this is what I do tonight. I do this. Uh, I know I announced this that I was going to do this this past weekend, but um, I wasn't uh, um, completely aware of the scheduling at that time. And so I, uh, I only remembered after I posted that that uh, the winter solstice was coming. And so I waited for this night for this power to release this information on Bobby Patton on the sellout cops here in Gunawagi and on the genocidal elective system, which the lesbian mayor is spearheading right now and doing all the things that everybody knows that Ganyaga Haga doesn't do. Oh, all of a sudden the Ganyaga Haga are partners with the province of Quebec. All of a sudden we're partners with Hydro Quebec. 
All of a sudden, we're partners with the province of Quebec in having the province build a hotel here in Ganawagi. Who in Ganawagi said, hey, let's build a hotel. You know what this is about? This is about a casino. It's not about anything else, it's not about a hotel. The people of Ganawagi are being hoodwinked by the lesbian mayor, by her agenda or his agenda, and by the sellout cops, because their agenda, as they follow their white mothers, is to destroy native mothers. And so we see like this, what Bobby Pat, that this is the prime example of somebody who doesn't have a native mother, how to destroy native mothers, native identity. And so I release this information upon Bobby Patton, as you deserve. I release it upon all the rest of the cops, as you deserve. I release it upon the sellout genocidal elective system, as you all deserve. I don't have to do nothing. I will not do nothing. But if we go on, we'll show you that uh, what is said here, just, wait, hold on. just so the court knows, we have a court worker working in Ganawage who happened to be an ex-peacekeeper for the last 26 years, Mr. Patton. And Mr. Patton fully knows who Mr. Mayo is. And he also told me that there was no way Mr. Mayo would cooperate with the court. <laughs> Imagine that. Who is Bobby Patton to be telling the court? There's no way I would cooperate. Hmm. Okay, let's see. We're going to go to another document, right? Uh, the document, the court document that was uh, lodged in my court case. Uh, uh back in august i think on august 9th something like that okay um and i released this before and i read it off to everyone and i posted it okay uh i really can't see it from here i'm gonna move away from the camera for a second i'm gonna get closer to the tv so i can read this off i'm gonna speak loud okay so uh, uh in in accordance with the United Nations criteria describing genocide, the recent horrific revelations of native children's bodies being found in mass unmarked graves all around the country in the Nazi style concentration camps known as residential schools exemplifies the genocide that so called Canada is guilty of committing upon the original peoples of Turtle Island. Therefore, as the charges you have laid against me, Stuart Mayo, are completely within the spectrum of genocide upon my people, I will not be complying with your request for me to walk willingly into your Nazi ovens by complying with your racist genocidal violations upon me in a supposed judiciary nature. Therefore, the supposed Canadian judicial system is to cease all actions against me, Stuart Mayo, in relation to this case. Should you wish to pursue this and issue an arrest warrant against me, I will not resist your physical assault upon me in violation of my rights, but will defend myself accordingly within the spectrum of the two world wampum peace treaty of the five nations longhouse confederacy under the authority of honor at goa but you will have to knowingly file a warrant against me which will exemplify the charges of racism and genocide that will be pursued in the following manner charges of racism and genocide will be placed upon the prosecutor who presents the motion the judge who affirms it and any level of police including gunawagi peacekeepers that will be bound to enforce it. Okay, uh, we could go on. You could go go on. Uh, let it go down, and uh, if anybody wants, they could read it anywhere. It's there. But the point is here that I wanted to uh, uh, emphasize is that I made fully clear to the court, and this is lodged in my court case. It's in the court saying that I'm not going to walk into the court. But if you issue an arrest warrant, I will not resist. I will comply. Uh, I will defend myself with the two row wampum. And so fully known that it's identified that I will not resist. Let's go back to that other document. But the Bobby Patton, sellout trader ass kisser, 
is telling the bailiff that there's no way I'm going to comply, but he tells them that I'm a free man on the land, implying that I will use violence against them. And the bailiff himself lied that I used uh, that I threatened him. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the video. So uh, just start that video right from the start. Um, uh, it's gonna take a second for this to set up. Now the video that we're gonna play is when the cop, the, the bailiff was here, what the, the sellout cop, whatever his name was, a doc stater, and uh, shows you clear right there. Uh, all the while he was here, the video was playing, recording him, never any kind of threat to him, just the video. Okay, what is it? We're gonna have to mute you so I can have uh, volume on the other. Can you mute it? Okay, what are you doing there? Can you just mute it so I can have volume here? Do you know him? You don't know him and you're bringing him to my house? Do you know why you're bringing him to my house? What document? Do you know? You don't know what the document is that this guy that you're bringing to my house, you have no idea. Okay, first off, who are you? Okay, uh, if you don't mind, my ears are really blocked. I have a hard time hearing. Who are you? Ben Dockstater. Ben Dockstater, and why are you here? Because uh, showing this bailiff where you live so that he can give you a document. Who's this guy? He's a bailiff. You know him? He is a bailiff. I met him Do you just know five him? minutes ago. You don't know him, and you're bringing him to my house? Do you know why you you're bringing him to my house? To serve you a document. What document? Do you know? I do not know. You he don't know it. what the document is that this guy that you're bringing to my house, you have no idea what it is? I'm not taking that. I'm not taking it. You don't know who this guy is. You don't know what he's bringing to me. And you expect me to take something from him? Are you okay. crazy? You are Stuart. Who are you? A bailiff. For what? From Revenue Quebec. Revenue Quebec? Oh, yeah. so you're assisting the white man coming to my house for Revenue Quebec. I am doing my job. You're doing your job. That's your job, right? Yes, to sir. assist the white man to genocide upon us. That's your job. Okay, unshare that. And let's go back to the, the court document. Okay, so as you see, the sellout cop says, I'm just doing my job, just doing my job. Obviously his job is to sell out the people of Ganawagi. Now, where does he work? Does he work in the Canadian army? Does he work for the Canadian, anywhere in the, for the Canadian government? Well, yes, he does. His job is to work for the Canadian government to oppress our people with the white man's laws against us here in our own community where those white man's laws are not supposed to apply. But the sellout cops here in Ganawage that were uh, uh, given the right by the Kisa Sello ban system are all part and parcel to the uh, accepting the genocide, accepting to work to uh, bring in taxation upon our people, bring in the casinos. Now, the only reason why the, they made this deal with the province of Quebec to uh, for millions of dollars, three, three point something million dollars, isn't much for a casino, uh, for a hotel. But the reason why they're making that is so that they can create their casino so that that will take the 
the pressure off of the taxation here in Gunawagi that they know they have to inflict upon you. They know they have to ease it onto you. So it can't be all at once. So the Quebec government is assisting the sellout lesbian mayor in creating the, this, uh, making it look like, oh, there's this uh, uh, partnership working with the province to build a hotel, be the, the groundwork for the casino. Let me really remind you all of something. If you're not all so stupid and don't remember your history, let me bring you back to 1988 in Ganasadagi. When, let's see, who was that guy? Uh, um, Jerry Pelche. Somebody who's not even from Ganasadagi. Somebody who's not a Ganyagahaga. He is Anishinaabe. Now, Jerry Pelche, they voted him, him, him in, in Ganasadage in, I forget what year, might have been 88 or 86. But in 88 or 89, whatever the year was, they made a deal with the province of Quebec. The province of Quebec actually footed the bill to build a super bingo in Ganasadage. Do you remember this? What happened the first night they opened the super bingo? Does anybody remember? SQ went in and shut them down. Well, wait a minute, let's see. The Quebec government first loaned the money to build the super bingo. And then the first night they were open, they sent in their SQ to shut them down. This is just to exemplify how stupid our people are. Yes, anybody who's in the sellout genocidal elective system is in fact a dumbass. Who else would work for the white man? Unless they are white themselves. And if they are white themselves, then they got no problem destroying our people. They are doing this uh, as their agenda right here under our noses, right in front of everybody's, uh, right in front of your eyes. It's happening here in Gunawagi. And so um, this is what I wanted to share with you tonight. Give you a Merry Christmas. And Bobby Patton, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. I hope all you kiss ass uh, sell out cops here in Gunawagi have a Merry Christmas. And I hope that all you sell out traders in the genocidal elective system have a Merry Christmas. Because you are all kissing the ass of the white man. And you are all together selling out the people of Gunawagi. And now the people of Gunawagi have just a little bit more evidence to see the truth of the world that you are trying to pull over their eyes. And so uh, this is what I wanted to share. Uh, there, the rest of the document there of the court minutes, you can just scroll down to, uh, uh, just scroll down. Are you scrolling down? Okay, it's all there. You, you'll see the rest of the court minutes, but Bobby Patton, sell out trader to the people of Ganawage. 26 years working with the court, the Quebec court. Now, again, all of you, all the people in Ganawage who have been wondering, gee, uh, what happened? How did the court uh, get you or whatever? Well, Bob Patton traded on you. Bobby Patton sold you out. Well, not only him, all the sellout cops in Gunawagi. And maybe it's part of his family. Maybe it's the other ones. I don't know. You look at the other cop, most of the cops, most of them all look white. Most of them are white. Most of them don't belong here in Gunawagi. Like I said, much less would a gun on their hip to oppress our people, to stop our people from exercising our rights. Hmm. None of you people in the cops or the band system belong here in Gunawagi. You should all just leave now. I am not going to do a damn thing against you. As you know, I never have done anything against you. I'm just going to let you fall to pieces and allow the people to do it. So the people have the information now. There's a lot more information than this that's coming up. Um, if and when this gets to court, I am going to get the actual name of the cop who sold us out that morning when they called Officer Constantine to tell them to look out for this truck coming on the road. I would tell you right now, it's best if you came forward and admitted it to me. Save yourself 
a lot of trouble. Come forward and admit it. Because if you wait until I have to get the name out in court, then I'll let the people of Ganawagi deal with you. Okay, so Merry Christmas, everybody. This is really good news. And there's going to be a lot more good news coming very soon in the very near future. The demise of all these sellout traders are on the horizon. Okay, now we'll go uh, as it is the, the solstice. Uh, you know that this is the time of transition. And so this, this is why I waited till this time to uh, release this. And yes, I release it directly upon Bobby Patton. I release it directly upon all the sellout cops in Gunawage. I release it directly upon the genocidal elective system here in Gunawage and everybody who's participated in it. You all are going to get what you deserve. Whatever you get, you deserve it 100%. You have sold out your people. Well, can't say your people, but you've finagled your way into positions why, which actually uh, uh, was facilitated in April of 2015 when only the 12 sellouts in the elective system voted to change the criteria as to who's eligible to run for mayor here in Gunawagi. Only the 12 sellouts, despite the fact that all the people of Gunawagi were working on a membership, only the 12 sellouts changed the electoral code to say that you no longer need to have a Mohawk mother to run for mayor. So imagine the whites change the system themselves because what person who has a Mohawk mother is gonna vote to say, you no longer have to have a Mohawk mother? You know, it's only all the whites. So you look at who's all the people who voted in town? All the people who voted in this, you know, all the, this last election, all the elections, if you are a Ganyangahaga and if you do have a clan, well, you're just a stupid ass sellout yourself. But the rest, they are on an agenda. The people who don't have the clans and who are going into that system, knowingly working in the white man's system, oppressing our own people, these people are on an agenda. They're on their mother's agenda. And their mothers are not Ganyangahaga. Their mothers are white. So uh, this is the power of the uh, winter solstice. The winter solstice now is ushered out all of the old, and now the new is coming in. And this year is going to be very different. All you sellout traders who have been living high on the hog able to get your loans, to get your houses, to get your uh, big fancy automobiles and to go on your vacations, that's coming to an end this year. Okay, uh, now we'll go on. I don't care again how you have to sort of go on the heads and they're going to go here at the Howard Gray. Come down here on heads and they're going to bring back the true spirit of the law and no place better to do it than upon these people who are in violation of it. So, uh, can you have a good night, everybody? Enjoy your holidays.